Hello and welcome developers. My name is Shay and this is another episode of Shay Develops. On the last video, we looked into creating a file using the java.io package. In this video, we're going to be looking into reading a file using the java.io package. And the reason we're using uh, I specify the java.io packages because there's also a java.nio package that we'll be looking into later in a different video. Java.nio stands for the new input output and that came a bit later and there's some debates on really which one's uh, better based off of how it works. But in this case we're going to be using, I said, and there's multiple ways in either direction to go to be able to do something like this, but we're going to be using the buffered reader in this video to make to read a file. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to come over here to our source file or source folder. We're going to right click, we're going to go to new file, and I'm just going to call it iofile.txt. We're going to create a text file. And then now we're going to input our text. You can put in whatever you really want to here, just uh, make sure it's like multiple lines because the way a buffered reader works is it reads a line at a time. So I've got this straight sto uh, this great story about this dude from Philadelphia. Uh, and we're going to use that to print out here on the code or here in, uh, here in our program. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to create a file, um, a, uh, a file, what is this here that I'm having a, a uh, little bit of a brain fart here. We want to create a a file object. There we go. A file object from the Java.io package. We're going to call it file equals new file, and we want to point it to the iofile.txt, and that's pretty simple. This it, it's iofile.txt. There we go, and that will give us access to our iofile.txt there within our source folder. The reason we didn't have to specify any other like type of path is just because of the location of where the file actually is. If the, lo if the file was outside somewhere on your computer, you could go to that file, you could right click it, you could get the path, and you could come here and paste that path into here so it might look something like C colon double slash because we need to escape one of these slashes. Uh, we'll call it I don't know downloads and then double slash and then iofile.txt. It could be something like that, but in this case, it's just going to be iofile.txt. And now, we, now that we have access to our file, we're going to create a buffered reader that will allow us to print out the file. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So to do that, we're just going to do buffered reader and this is the java.io buffered reader. Make sure so it imports the correct one for you. And we're just going to call it br equals new buffered reader. And buffered reader takes a file reader object. So we're just going to new file reader. Again, uh, not filter reader, but file reader, java.io. And then we can just pass at the file that we've created uh, from here. And now we get in a little error here because it's saying, oh, there's an exception that has not been uh, accounted for. So we need to throw this into a, a try catch. So that's easy enough. We'll just do try. And then we will grab this, paste it in here. And then now we still need to do the catch part. And if you haven't watched it, if you're a little if you're not sure how this try catch works, you can go back and watch my video on try catches. We talk about this, and there'll be another try catch video coming out uh, shortly where we do a try catch with resources. All right, so we need to account for this exception that's about to come. So what what is the exception here? If we hover over it, it says unhandled file not found exception. All right, so we can create a file not found exception that it's expecting in this catch, and we'll just output file not found. All right, and then now we are ready to get uh, to start getting the lines or ready to start getting the code. So what happens if we just output our buffered reader? Well, it's not it's it's going to work, but it's not really going to work. See what happens whenever you're getting the buffered reader from the file and stuff. You're getting 
Oh, a file not found. That's interesting. We'll have to look into that here in just a second. But what happens is you're not getting the actual file. You're getting just like a reference to, and it's not a, uh, you're going to reference to uh, where the data is, so an, an address. So instead, we need to do what's called a read line and then save that read line into a into a string. So let's do make sure I spell that all properly there. Oh, and I'm in the wrong uh, document here. You can see I need to be in the read file io yt. And we're just going to go ahead and refactor that. There we go. Now that should be working as intended. So my mistakes on, on that issue right there. All right, so let's go ahead and run this again and see if we still get the file not found. Oh, now we're actually getting the, the files being found and we're outputting right here, see the uh, address to the buffered reader or well, the address to the file that the buffered reader has gotten for us, got uh, attached itself to. So we could do just br.readline, which in itself doesn't save uh, anything to it. It's just allowing you to read a line, but we also have a little error here and it's another unhandled exception. So we can just do, we just do another catch. And then what was the exception? IO exception, all right. So we just do IO exception E. There was an error reading the file. Okay, now let's see if we can print out one of the lines or print out the entire story that we have, which is, it's only four, uh, four lines deep. But now we're only getting the first line, which is exactly how the buffered reader works. It reads one line at a time, grabs that information and you can pass it through. So in order to pat or to uh, to output multiple lines, we're going to need a we're going to need a while statement and we're going to need a string variable in order to store that uh, store that line as we print it. So let's go ahead and get our string variable. So we'll call it a string line. And then we will go ahead and erase this. We don't need that now. And we'll do while and we'll do line equals br dot read line because that's how we were reading the line before and we'll make sure that does not equal to null and we're going to err here because we need to separate this line uh, equals br read line from the not equals to null so we can do that pretty easily there we go. And now that's working I said, as intended. So let's go ahead and actually output br.readline here. And we are going to come in here to the IO file and we're gonna take everything out of it for right now. And just to show you guys that whenever we run this and it doesn't work, down here in the bottom, yeah, it's gonna output null right there so we have a, a null value so if it does not equal null basically meaning once it gets down to the end if once it gets to the end it'll read null and it'll break us out of this loop so we're not in this like continuous cycle so right now if i was just doing line equals br dot read line and we commented this section out and actually let's go ahead and i'll put that put that back in there and then we'll go cut this out for now. We'll paste it back in here in just a second. And we just do line does not equal to null. And then we wanted to just output the line. Let's see how that works. And boom, we're in this eternal loop. It's never going to end, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. But yeah, so we're in this internal loop where it's just reading the very first line over and over and over and over again and never going down to the next line. So in order to stop that, we don't want to do this here, like I said. We want to keep that as string.line and then here we're going to pass back our line equals br.readline. So while 
line equals br dot read line. So each time it's not it's line isn't being saved to or line isn't so each time this while loop runs line isn't saved to the first line it's going down through each line of of our text and then outputting that in uh outputting that text that line of text uh, to our screen all right so let's go ahead and output this again now and this should work exactly as intended and here we go we printed out our story and like I said everything is working as intended and we're breaking out of the while loop because we'll see process finished with exit code zero it means everything worked great so we're breaking out of our loop and still printing the story all right guys that is it for reading a file with the buffered reader we'll have uh, more videos like this if it becomes popular or something you guys are interested in and so because there's multiple different ways to actually do this and we can talk over uh, all of them really but I've got some more videos coming up in the future I'm also working on a course in web development that's going to be coming up on Udemy very soon so look forward to that if you guys are interested uh, but other than that let me know in the comments what you guys are working on if I can help you out in any way love to hear back from you please like comment subscribe it'll mean a lot to me so I can you know make more content for you guys and know that it's reaching you know the right kind of people all right, you guys have a great day, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.